Tonight, conversations continue on Capitol Hill about who might become the next speaker. John Bogman joins us to chronicle how the recent past has shaped an uncertain future. John? J.D., it all started after Pope Francis paid a visit to Washington, D.C. After meeting with His Holiness, the Speaker announced his resignation the next day. Taking questions, the outgoing Boehner endorsed the majority leader, Kevin McCarthy, as his successor. Uh, but having said that, I think that Kevin McCarthy would make an excellent speaker. Well, for a short while, it was thought McCarthy would be unopposed in this until he made that gaffe about the Select Committee on Benghazi. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Well, then, Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz condemned McCarthy's words, and over the weekend, he decided there might be a better option for the House Speaker. Today, here, I am announcing my intention to run for Speaker of the House of Representatives. Also a key player in this race, Congressman Jim Jordan, head of the Freedom Caucus, he could deliver the votes needed to put either candidate in the Speaker's chair. One place neither candidate should look, though, for help, the Democrats. Steny Hoyer, the minority whip, says he'll let the GOP keep fighting each other. They'll support Nancy Pelosi for Speaker. Of course, we know that won't happen. We'll find out who will come out on top after the vote. That's slated for October 29th. J.D.? And thanks, John. Added to the mix on the Republican side, of course, Florida Congressman Dan Webster. For more on this story, joining us via Skype from Northern Virginia, the chairman of conservativehq.com, Richard Vigory. And also checking in from Newsmax, Washington, my congressional colleague from the class of 94, now the president of Flanagan Consulting, former Congressman Michael Patrick Flanagan. Richard, first to you. Is McCarthy a lock on this thing, or does Chaffetz or Webster have a chance? Uh, not at all is he a lock. Uh, of course, you know that there are several votes. There's a vote uh, tomorrow uh, among the Republicans, and, they're, and if he uh, falls short of getting uh, a majority 218, then uh, he's going to have to look to the Democrats for some votes uh, when the uh, final vote is held in, in late October. It is by the hour, the the disappointment in Republican leaders is growing, J.D. And by the way, the, the issue is not who's the most conservative. Uh, as you well remember, uh, Newt Gingrich was never a conservative, but Newt was a fighter. He would get up in the morning thinking, what three, four, five things can I do today to put the Democrats out of business? And uh, people responded to that energy and that passion and, and articulating the issues. And the Republican leaders in the House and the Senate have gone mute for years now. People at the grassroots, uh, J.D., are white hot with anger. Well, let's see, how that trans uh, let's see how that translates, Richard, from the grassroots to up there on the Hill. Michael Patrick Flanagan, you're not too far away from the Capitol, literally and figuratively. Any of the trio of Republicans up for speaker really legislative fighters? I, I don't think, I think Richard's right. I think he's exactly correct with, the, with what the, the public wants. What does the Congress want? Do we want an institutionalist who's going to try and move legislation and get it forward like Boehner? Or do we want a party guy who's going to do party stuff and, and make good noise for the party? I'd offer you that we need an institutionalist to make the organs of government run and run well. There's a great advantage in having a party guy, but I don't see either of those guys emerging from the field that's there. I think what you have a lot on the Hill are a whole bunch of guys who would make great speakers who wouldn't have anything to do with the job if their lives depended on it. And I think there are a few in the caucus like that. Failing conference. to speak up to take the speakership, fair enough. For his point, uh, for his part, Jason Chaffetz spoke with CNN on the uphill battle. Let's take a listen, then get your reaction to what he had to say. I want to fight to win, but at the same time, I, I, it's clear that Kevin McCarthy has the majority of support uh, within our conference. I just worry that he doesn't have quite enough to actually win on the floor. Uh, and it comes down to the floor. Richard, could you envision a situation where conservatives withhold their votes from Kevin McCarthy, failing to let him get to 218? Uh, absolutely, J.D. We have to remember, uh, it's not a question of who's going to be the most partisan or who's going to make the institution run on time and make the trains run on time. The issue is who's going to help save America. 
The grassroots Americans are frightened. We're losing our country, and our leaders are silent. We're very, very focused on saving America. And so uh, I think the Republican conservatives are going to play hardball here, and uh, they're going to have to remember uh, that uh, we're focused on America here. We've got primaries coming up here soon, and as I say, it's primary is stupid. And if you vote for McCarthy as a uh, in the House, uh, you're likely to be primaried. I think you're uh, you can expect a primary uh, battle if you vote for McCarthy. Conservatives, as I said. J.D., are white hot with anger. You see it in Trump's vote, in Ben Carson, Carla Farino, uh, uh, Cruz's vote. People are furious, and they want changes, and we don't want this business-as-usual uh, mentality that the Republicans have been practicing for so long. You know, it was interesting. Last night, Ron Paul was on this program, uh, Mike Flanagan, and um, he said, well, gee, I take a look at these guys. I kind of like Dan Webster. Now, Webster served as the Florida speaker. He sounds like an institutionalist. He's also a fresh face. Anyway, that Webster uh, wins this thing in your mind. It might be a good idea to have a compromise candidate. Maybe for the first time ever, they should go outside the House. It's important to remember that for uh, five or six years ago, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats went through this. And the crazies won. Nancy and her progressives beat back Steny Hoyer and the institutionalists. And we got Obamacare and what it turned out to be, what I'm guessing is, a near-term permanent minority for the Democrats. Even though the, Dem the, the grassroots for the Republicans are very angry, and they are, do we want to go to that same place? And my guess is no. We need an institutionalist that can run it hard, and we need to elect a firebrand president who will use Congress in a way that it needs to be used. Richard invoked the name of Newt Gingrich earlier. There have been a couple of columns saying... Anybody can be elected speaker. Would they bring back Newt? Uh, we'll bring you gentlemen back to assess what's going on in the not-too-distant future. Up next, a new ad released on behalf of Joe Biden. Brad Blakeman will assess what it means for the Democrats in their presidential race when Newsmax Prime continues.